Hello, welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. Uh, first of all, before we start, I would like to thank each of you for subscribing to this channel and making us reach 500 subscribers. You guys are amazing. Today we are going to learn about for loops. Uh, we'll discuss about five things you may or may not be aware of and how to make the optimum use of it. As you can see, uh, we have a for loop with 100 connected to the iteration terminal. That means it's going to run for 100 times. And I'm going to generate an array using that value. As you can see, the for loop has got the auto index capability and it is going to create an array just by connecting through the tunnel. This is the first property of for loop. Now let us examine the newer feature in LabVIEW. What if I don't want to create an array of the entire value, but I want to create an array of the filtered value? So what I can do is I can right click and I can change the tunnel mode into the conditional so that I can filter the specific values and create, a, create an array only using those particular values. In this case, I'm using the greater than sign and then I'm filtering the values that are greater than 0 0.5 so if I change that to less than 0 0.5 as you can see I just replace the greater than vi to less than vi all the values are less than 0 0.5 now uh, by using this code you don't have to write the additional codes using the separate registers now the another thing about for loop is you can add the additional uh, conditional terminal just like in the while loop first of all I just want to terminate the iteration first of all and my for loop originally is going to run for 100 times but I am now adding a condition in which if the value is less than 0.1 I'm going to terminate my iteration. That means the loop is going to stop at that moment. So if I'll run it, as you can see, I can see like a different values uh, that is between 0 and uh, 1, but whenever the value is less than 0 0.1, then the loop has finished iterating. Now we'll discuss about how to control the iteration of a for loop without actually using the iteration terminal. Uh, we'll make additional copy of the same code and rather than using the values we are going to pass our through into the end of the loop. Now the first loop is being controlled by the iteration terminal but in the second diagram, second for loop as you can see even without connecting the terminal the for loop will automatically determine the size of an array and it is going to run for required iterations. Now we are coming to the final thing about the for loop. What we will do is now, uh, we're, since we have got two loops and if we go to the find uh, parallelizable loops, it will tell us whether we can make use of the cores that are available in our system. For example, if you have got dual core or like a quad core or octa core processors and everything, you can actually increase the performance of your for loops. To access this option, go to Tools and Profile and click Find Parallelizable Loops. If you see over there, at the moment I've got two loops in my diagram, but I'm getting like a possibly not parallelizable and not parallelizable and uh, you can also see some of the uh, comments why these loops are cannot be run in parallel. If you want to make use of the parallelizable loops, what you have to do is you have to make sure the codes that exist inside the for loop are not dependent in any way. To demonstrate this, We'll get rid of the existing code and rewrite a code that can actually be parallelizable. So parallelizable basically means uh, you can run the same kind of codes 
using making use of all the cores that are available to in your system so now I'm creating an array and what I'll do is I'll just write this code uh, in the meantime I'm going to explain a little bit about the paralyzing the follows when you parallelize your follows what actually happens is each of the loops are running in different threads and different cores So once our uh, one code is complete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the duplicate copies of the same code. So at the moment, I'm telling the LabVIEW that I'm going to run all these six loops in parallel. But even though they are running in actually in parallel, they are not actually making uh, proper use of the cores and the resources available in the system. So if I'll go and check uh, the profile and then check the find paralyzable loops, as you can see, all of them are showing the green tick. That means these can actually paralyze them. As you can see, I've got six loops. Uh, the total iteration by six loops will take 300. So I'm going to convert one of the loops into paralyzable. So I'll right click and you'll see the option called configure and I'll select that one and I'll change that to six uh, different parallel loops so as you can see I got like a small P uh, underneath the iteration terminal now the entire six different loops can be replaced with this single loop not only this makes your code much more readable but it is actually making use of all the hardwares that are available in your disposal in different cores. Please like, share and comment this video and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for future lab videos. Thank you for watching.